you know, found found you know found more sanity uh, transferring you know uh, through their education and and were able to thrive and and flourish even even better in other other areas. This is not to back talk the New York experience because I think um, you know if Ariel would would tell the truth that she you know she found some good from it, but you know oh, first, eventually. Yeah. Uh, came came back so yeah yeah as i said believe me as a native new yorker i say i understand and i'll also say as a resident of charlotte for the last 20 years we're glad <laughs> to have you back home so okay well troy i noticed uh, just over your left shoulder you uh, seem to have uh, an axe of some kind there does oh, uh does yeah. that thing uh work that is it, yeah it does work um, okay, well, you have one over your left. Let's look at you have one. Oh, wait, well, I, which, which one? I can, I can, yeah, I got, I got well, both of them now. Matter, you you know, know? It matter. <laughs> I just happened to see that one was more prominent, so I <laughs> saw that first. But okay. is there anything you could share with us on that since this is also about music? We've talked a while. Anything you'd like to share with us musically if the live uh, stream will hold up? Oh, uh, sure. Um, I'll do, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Let's, I'll, I'll just play what, what I play for Felix in, in, in the morning you know a good uh I've, I've been trying to just kind of uh with the time you know go back and learn like really internalize some songs that i should know that i that i haven't known <laughs> so um that i like so we'll do a tune in d minor um uh beautiful love just oh like a real yeah. just like a just a real quick this is a real quick little thing i don't know okay um <laughs> Outstanding, yes. Yeah. Sure, thank, oh, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See the rounds of applause coming in. Just want to let you know if you just in case you didn't see it, our old friend Matt Postal, who's uh, on tonight, he just said that he misses playing with you. And you know, man, oh. this you know, is really great to hear you. Oh man. So uh, Matt says, Hey, now Dr. Bradford, 
I see you also are backed by what appears to be a keyboard of some kind. Yes, I got one behind me and a friend. Which one you want? Which one I can put both of them? No. Well, brother, which one you got, <laughs> man? What, what you know? How's the spirit leading you tonight, my brother? All right. Play something here. Yeah, a little something, something. Let's... Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Was now. Let me just ask. Was that a small wood uh, composition, Lavelle? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a small wood composition, but he did record it. Okay, because that—that's because when you first started playing, I started thinking Richard mm -hmm. Smallwood. That's where I heard it from. Okay, but yeah. beautiful piece for those of beautiful. us who unfamiliar. What was the title of what you were just playing, sir? It's called "I Love the Lord." He heard my cry. Yes. Okay. All right. Beautiful piece. Um, Ariel, because you're not uh, being probably back... most, popularly, most popularly known from the wife. I'm sorry. Uh, most popularly heard uh, from the movie The Preacher's Wife with Whitney Houston. She yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember you were there as well. Now, Ariel, uh, we're going to go to questions in a few minutes, but uh, for those of you before, you know, you start at me and everything. Why didn't I ask Ariel to play? Well, you don't see her back by a keyboard. So unfortunately, she 
doesn't have one uh, with her this evening that she's able to access, but we're more than happy to have her. But I will tell you all that uh, if you do want to hear more from Ariel, I can make three great recommendations for, for you. Three of her very fine albums that I'm a big fan of, and I know if you're not already, you should be, and you should hear about them as well. We'll start with the most recent one. She did a beautiful album with uh, another good friend of ours here at uh, Jazz Art Charlotte, Chad Eby and Ariel, who've been close friends forever. So they decide to title their album BFFs. <laughs> and uh, that's one very fine one. Also, there's one called Living in Twilight, which uh, is also quite terrific, and Touchstone. Now, that, Ariel, did I leave out anything from a recorded standpoint? That's all That's all the ones there are so far, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting and, on some new stuff. I, I'm thinking about putting it out during this extended period of inactivity. <laughs> okay. Now, would, should we go to your website if we wanted to, uh, mm -hmm. to purchase any of those recordings or find yes. out? Because, of course, we would not mm -hmm. tape them. We would not get them from any other <laughs> means than buying either the CD or a legal download. Is exactly. that correct? But if you do, I can't blame you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I, I can blame you, okay? No, Especially yeah, they're all on my website. Time, you know, if you won't say it, I will, okay? <laughs> I appreciate buy, that. Buy the dang on thing, okay? I'm not, I'm not gonna say it in any other way than I'm thinking <laughs> it. But if you love it, if you like it, buy it, okay? Especially now. So, I know Lonnie, I just saw Lonnie put into the chat. We've got about 15 minutes left. I like to be a man of my word. And I did say at, at about this point, uh, we'd open up I'd stop talking, which is very good for all of you. And uh, we let uh, some of you get in with the questions that you have. So Lonnie, I don't see you, but if yeah. you're there. Oh, okay. I am here. All okay. right, we have our first question coming in from someone that we know very well, and that is Mr. O, Mr. Oscar Grooms. Yes. He's joining us and he has a question. So take it away, Please. Mr. Grooms. Thanks, Lonnie, and thanks. It's great to see you, Curtis, and you're still rocking and rolling. Got Good the, to see you, question. brother. Good, the great voice, the whole nine yards. I call you the voice anyway. But uh, you, hey, listen, I, it's great to hear uh, the musicians, LB, all you guys out there. Uh, and, and really, it's great to see uh, Jazz Art Charlotte taking advantage of, of the media we have to, to get out and keep keep jazz alive. Um, it's It's... It's good when there's a crisis like this, sometimes it bursts a lot of opportunity because it forces people to deal with change that we ordinarily would not do. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of us that, you know, we wouldn't be getting on Zoom because <laughs> we don't want to worry about it. And, and people <laughs> are learning how to master this thing. We'd like to get the sound better. We'd like to get the video better. But there's a lot of really good stuff that can come out of this. The dialogue that we have here is much more engaging than what we could have in the jazz room, for example. And I'm hoping that we can continue that kind of thing going forward. But more importantly, you guys talked about being in New York, the mecca, if you will, for jazz. And we don't have the access to a lot of the artists there. But what we learned during this crisis can bring us a lot closer. And I get on some, some live streaming things in Chicago, on the West Coast, as well as New York. And the audience that you guys can tap into is huge. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I want to continue to stimulate, you know, you, Curtis, and Lonnie, and, and the Jazz Arts Board to think big. There is no limit to what this is not no longer just a local thing. If we can make it right, it's got to be exciting. It's got to be brief. And we got to make it happen. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mr. Mr. O. All right. Um, let's see. I believe we have another question. Uh, and that will be from, and I'm just looking for him here. Um, Aaron Storniello, <laughs> did you have a question Aaron. for of our musicians? Hey, yeah. Um, great to see you all. Um, Hi, Aaron. Hey. Too. <laughs> I was well, wondering here. if you guys had like a practice routine that you stick to or whatever you feel like working on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, to anybody. Um, I guess I can start. Um, oh, I don't have access to a real piano right now. I just have a keyboard, which is kind of drag. Um, 
So that definitely dampens my enthusiasm for practicing. So since I don't really feel like shedding a lot of classical or anything, what I've mo mostly been doing is just writing more, which is something that I've been trying to work on more anyways. But now that that's kind of the only thing I feel like doing, I've just been trying to write a song every week, which is not even that much, but even just having that deadline kind of helps me know, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's rolling around the end of the week. I better just sit down and crank something out. And then I feel a little bit better than if I've just noodled, you know, without any end goal. So for me, just having really basic parameters of, okay, I'm just going to do this one task. Um, that's been helping, but I gotta be honest, it's, it's pretty hard to force myself to do anything right now. Um, I've been devoting a lot of energies to figuring out how to teach. So Mm. By the time I do that, it's like, oh my gosh, and then I have to play. But that being said, if you figure out a good practice routine, please let me know. <laughs> if somebody else has one. <laughs> cool. How about um, either Lavelle or uh, Mr. Bradford or Mr. Khan? <laughs> well, I'll let Troy go first. You're a guitarist, man. You might have some good stuff for him. Mm. He's muted. Troy, you're muted. I think Troy's muted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Troy, 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 Troy. There we go. Okay. okay. There he is. Okay, okay, cool. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah, it said I couldn't unmute myself. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so, so Aaron, uh, you know, I guess it, it changes for me depending on what I have to learn, you know, um, right now I don't have anything I have to, <laughs> I have to learn. Right. You know, everything that I would, every gig that I would have to learn music for is no longer exists for, for the time, time being. Um, what I've been doing, though, is, uh, it, you know, first thing in the morning, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just play something, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to work on anything. I used to reserve that, that, that time to play whatever I wanted at for the end of the day and after I've worked to learn whatever I need, need to learn, but I've, but I've, I've flip-flopped it, and I, I, I like the results of that a lot better, actually. So I, just, I just reserved just a few minutes. Sometimes it ends up being seconds. Sometimes it ends up being the entire practice session. Um, but I just play something that, that I want to play, you know, whether it be a tune or Im an improv. Um, sometimes these little improvs in end up becoming tunes. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a standard. Sometimes it's, you know, you know, part of a mode, you know, or whatever. So I do that. And then... Um, then, then maybe that's all I do for that session, you know, then I move on to uh, later on in the day, I'll get a little more serious with, with my, you know, with things that need, need, need to be done. I've been trying to reserve one practice session, you know, uh, to, you know, mechanical things and then um, learning tunes um, and then writing as well. One thing I do, I have it right here. I've been keeping my practice journal. Mm. You know, that's really helpful for me. I don't have very good self uh, self discipline, so any I have to use all 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 the tricks in the book to uh, you know to keep myself honest. And practice journal does wonders. You know I didn't make it too far today. You know. <laughs> cool. I'll have to try that out. Good idea. <laughs> Did you have anything uh, for Bradford? Um, yeah, they they pretty much set it up. I I try to break my practice it first of all it is the caveat it, it depends on what type of time i have if time were not an an obstacle um i try to break it up into what the essentials are for me and for me the essentials are number one uh continuing the mastery of technique technique on my instrument uh, two is uh, mild application, uh, generic application uh, in a drill kind of way. Um, whereas I, um, you know, especially if it's genre specific, you know, jazz, trying to make sure you, you know, you master uh, or you drill work on two fives and different type of progressions. And then three is if I have enough time, I'll be um, song specific or a, a certain type of song to where I, I begin, I continue to, to elaborate on how I would, um, uh, how I would solo or modes or stuff on a certain 
song uh, in my, with a certain song in mind. So I try to keep those three things. If I if I can't get to all all three of them, number one for me is making sure that I keep technical mastery of my instrument. So scales or pagios, all of that stuff. Um, if I'm not able to get to the other two, at least I'm able to you know to stay you know proficient on the instrument. So, mm -hmm. yep. Ah, cool. It's nice to know that the masters still practice scales and stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Um, man, <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you Aaron. Good to hear from you. Good to you see you, too. Aaron. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So uh, next question we have is from Barbara Birch. And I will go hey, ahead and Barbara. You. Barbara. Hi, y'all. There you Hi, go, Barbara. Barbara. Hi. Hey. Um, well, I think I'm going to probably be dovetailing, adding on what Mr. O said about the good that I hope can come out of this. And I gotta quickly say the one thing I know I miss, cause I'm an introvert. So I hate to say this is suiting me altogether too well <laughs> to stay home and hold up. Um, the one thing I miss is the jazz room. Yeah. It's the one thing that mm -hmm. I look forward to returning to. I hope I'm coming through. I don't know if my mm -hmm. audio is okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. you are. You're coming through loud and clear. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I really, that's the highlight of my month is the jazz room. So I look forward to being together with you all again. Um, but I'm feeling like there's so much that's of value now. I hope I'm not repeating something asked earlier. But I wonder what you all want to hold on to from this experience. Has that been talked about? Did I miss something earlier? No, that's a good question. No, no, it is fine. Yes. Anyone? Um, I'll go because that's something I've thought about actually is um, what do I want to take from this? I don't want to just go back to, to normal and not that appreciate you know the things um i think it's really useful to to take stock of what things you truly miss and what things you're relieved to let go of um i know that for myself there are plenty of things that i really really do miss and people i miss playing with and gigs i miss playing and venues um that i'm really excited to get back to whenever that may be knock on wood um and it's also been good to note what things maybe I'm relieved to not be doing <laughs> and to take stock of the fact that, okay, maybe when things go back to normal, maybe I shouldn't be devoting my time and energy to this thing that's not really the way I want to be using my time when I could be doing something else instead. So there's not that much of that, luckily, but I do think that as musicians, we can be really... Um, we can we can really buy into the oh if you're not busy 24 7 thing you're not a good musician um and especially as somebody who lived in new york recently that's very much the mindset is you have to constantly be working and working and working um and i think across the board for other fields of work as well a lot of people are going to be noticing that a lot of things kind of bubble up to the surface when you have time to think about them and one of those things is am i just being busy to be arbitrarily busy so i feel good about my inherent worth as a musician or as a person who works in this field or is it something that I really consciously want to devote my energy to in my finite time so that's something that's it's hard to think about that and in all honesty some of it is kind of uncomfortable to sit with but when you have all this time um, you might as well sort through it so that when you don't when you go back you don't just immediately pick up everything that you put down without reflecting at all so I hope that makes sense <laughs> Thank okay. you. That that's exactly the. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Barbara. Great. Thank you, Barbara. Grew yes. up with the way I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Um. All right. Next person we have up is Brad Davis. Let's see, Brad, where are you? Brother Davis. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, if I could find the Brad, are you still there, Brad? Uh, da, 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 da. Looking for Brad, looking for Brad. I don't see Brad. Looks like he might not be there with us. What's for Brad? 
Uh, yep, I do not see Brad. Mm. Unfortunately, if Brad pops up again, then we will we will go to, to go to Brad. Um, let's see. Next question we have up is uh, Ricardo. All right, so Ricardo, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and unmute you right now. Hi, okay, Ricardo. I didn't know that I could scroll and find everybody. That's cool. Are you there, Ricardo? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Like so, that shirt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, what's the things that you should work on to improve like at any level of musicianship what are some things that you can always be working on because mm -hmm. i'm at a bit of a brick wall right now thank you good question well, ricardo what what is um what is your what is, what is your thing what do you what do you play in in what genre i play uh jazz sax and a little bit of piano, but not too much. What, what, what I find is when you're, when you're a young musician, the, and I think that, you know, academia has kind of, sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot, but um, one thing that I know that we have to continue to do is to, to build our ears. Some of us are born with, with better ears than others, but at the same time, um, we have to constantly be listening to this music. It's, it's, it's a music that was, that, that the greats learned from it being passed down and being listened to. And I, I can't overstate that we have to confirm what we've heard by what we learn and not the other way around. Like the, the, the initial, you know, initiation to, to a, con a musical concept should start from you hearing it first mm -hmm. and then being introduced to make, you know, it being broken down, what does this mean, you know, in, in, in a classroom or in a lesson setting. But um, it can't be, go and listen to this so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's got to be the other way around. I think us as instructors have to find a way to point the student back to the recordings um, where the, you know, you fall in love with the music from and you, you know, you, you hear examples of, of the musical examples of, of what things should sound like. So I'm encouraging all my young musicians to, to, to listen, to listen, to, to find those old recordings and listen as much as you can. So uh, that's what I'm, that's what, that's what I'm pushing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All yeah. right. Yes. Yeah, just so. a note, just a note, Lavelle. Um, yes. uh, Ricardo is actually in our youth ensembles <laughs> program. He's in the Ellington ensemble with Mr. Sean oh. Higgins. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you, Ricardo. Yeah, that's good great. to see you all too. Yeah. yeah. it over time is do we have time for one more question perhaps or do we have one more i should say i actually don't believe we have any more questions okay all mm -hmm. right then so one. then lonnie i will well first before i turn it back to lonnie for the wrap up i just want to say even though the guests don't don't leave until we actually wrap up but first i want to uh, thank our guests ariel pocock lavelle bradford and troy khan for joining us on the first conversations with Curtis. But most of all, I want to thank each of you for being out there to join us for this. And we definitely won't make it the last time. As a matter of fact, if you join us next Tuesday at this same time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to have three more very special guests. As we're going to have a uh, 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 Charlotte native who is a part of the Trumpet Mafia down in New Orleans now. We're gonna have Mr. Ashlyn Parker with us and we're also going to be joined by a couple of gentlemen we've also heard in the jazz room who spent a lot of time in the Carolinas and who are well known for being a part of Prince's NPG horns. His saxophone is Mr. Adrian Crutchfield and the trumpeter Mr. Lynn Grissom will both be with us. Oh yes, yeah, so you're going to be Brilliant. so sorry if you miss nice. being with us here on Conversations with Curtis. I'm Curtis, you can hear me now and always at my station, that's Kurt Jazz Radio on Live 365, 
when you're done here, why don't you tune in there and we can keep the jazz going. So Lonnie, I turn it back over to you. All right, thank you again. I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us tonight and a special thanks to all of our supporters and our donors who have been with us uh, all this time. Also special thanks to Ray Ward for helping us to launch this great project. And um, Jazz Art Charlotte is a nonprofit organization and we're dedicated to connecting the community and building a jazz audience through education, performance, and musician support. Uh, and if you uh, do have the means and uh, are interested, please go to our website and support us at thejazzarts.org. And um, with that, I would again like to thank everyone for joining us and um, you guys take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. So long, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.